Uh, this is the first part of lecture seven. Lecture seven by itself is the first part of the third part of the lectures, which are on the modern design technology. This third part of the lecture series will have four lectures. The first one is design of narrowband modems or narrowband modem technologies. Uh, the second one uh, would be the effect of fading and multipath. Uh, and the so-called, well, in particular, effect of fading. It's called uh, fading and diversity and coding. Part three is design of uh, traditional broadband modems. And part four is uh, design of uh, spread spectrum modems. Uh, and that, uh, these four together constitute part three of the course. And also it's part three of the second edition of the book. So we start the first lecture in part three on the modem design by design of narrowband modems. In this particular lecture, uh, first I will go over the basic uh, of modulation techniques. Uh, either for uh, first we talk about uh, binary modulation techniques and then we go for uh, multi symbol modulation techniques then after that I go to uh, standard modems uh, used for radio application in particular I talk about GMSK which is the a modulation technique used in GSM, also in CDPD, and a lot of other, in fact, popular uh, systems. The other one is the so-called pi over 4 QPSK, which was the choice of uh, American TDMA system, which is used to be IS-54, later on turned to IS-136, and also it is used in uh, data networks like Tetra in Europe and also it was used in Japanese digital cellular standard. So basically in cellular networks we have uh, either GMSK or pi over 4 QPSK. These are TDMA systems. And uh, then this uh, variety of other modulation techniques that I have in the first part, these are the ones which are used in like wireless LANs and these are the ones which are used in cellular and I give a view, overview of all of these things the emphasis is on performance evaluation and also in uh, just uh, providing you an overview of the things that I expect you knew before about modulation techniques so basically, most of you, I expect that you have had binary or multiple symbol modulation techniques before in other courses. And in here, I'm just reviewing that. Now, uh, and after I reviewed that, I talk about GMSK and pi over 4 QPSK that some of you may have had, some of you may not have had it before. Now, to start the Thing. Let me start with this con concept of pulse transmission. Communication, uh, I mean telecommunication, takes place by pulse transmission. So I want to communicate between two different points. I have to send a signal from one point to the other point. The earliest communication techniques was like a smoke, and a smoke was a signal, and you send it from one mountain, and other people look at that in the other mountains, if you have a smoke, it's a binary one. If you don't have a smoke, it's binary zero. So it's digital communication. Now, in like uh, telecommunication applications, we have electrical signals, so we send a symbol, which is like a pulse shape. And then you receive that pulse shape at the receiver, you process it, and you end up with a number again, which is somehow related to that symbol. And based on that number, you want to detect what was sent. You're talking about digital communication. We have 
The simplest way is binary communication. I have zero and one, so I have one symbol for zero, one symbol for one. But before we get to like the digital communication aspect of that, let's look at the pulse transmission thing, because with each pulse, I want to give you a binary digit, or like a number, a digit. And let's see how we process that. Basically, the way that we do is that we send a pulse, pulse shape. We send like a, a square pulse, or we send like a Gaussian pulse, or often we send something like a sync pulse. These two are the most popular ones, possibly. A square is very simple to implement. Sync is very good because its a spectrum is a square. If I take the Fourier transform of this thing, in frequency domain is a square. What is good about having a square in frequency domain, then other people can live without my interference. But if I send a square pulse, what will happen is that the Fourier transform has side lobes, and these side lobes will interfere with other people who are communicating in other frequencies close to me. But, uh, so this one is very simple to implement, and I implement it when I don't have multiple channels. For example, if I have like RS-232 cable which connects my terminal to my computer or whatever, I put the square pulses. Very simple to implement. But if I have like a modem which I want to use it in the like long distance, long haul communications, I don't use the square pulses because these side lobes cannot be transferred well through the transmission system. And then the waveform which is received looks ugly. If I shape it like this, like a sync pulse, it gets more content inside my bandwidth, so at the other end it's better shaped. The original shape is not changed much. So that's, that's the purpose of changing the pulse shape. But anyways, no matter what type of pulse shape that I send, at the receiver often they pass it through the so-called matched filter. Match filter basically is a filter which its shape is matched to the transmitted shape. Okay, so if it was like a pulse like a square, the impulse response of the match filter, impulse response of the match filter is a sort of similar to this. Usually it's flip of this thing, I mean rotated version of the pulse. But all of these pulses are symmetric, so rotation is the same as what it was. So what I do usually in pulse transmission is that I have like one filter at the transmitter which generates my pulse shape. So the information comes, it's like a whatever information is, I want to send the pulse. I put an impulse in here and the impulse response would be like a pulse shape like this. Okay. Then at the receiver I have another, in fact, another filter which is actually the same as the filter that I had at the transmitter. And this guy, actually the impulse response is similar to this other guy. And then the output which comes out is convolution of this thing with this thing. I will sample it, and that is the number that I will use for decision for decision making. Okay. These two filters, since they are the same, they are referred to as matched filters. Matched filters. A simple example of matched filter is like, as I said, a square pulses. If I want to generate a square pulses, actually I don't need any filter. I just send the square pulse, go up and down. At the receiver for that, I put an integrator. Integrator is like an RC network. Integrate, integrator integrate this thing and I mean integrating this thing a square goes like this integrator. Okay? And then I mean if I sample it at this point I sample it at the peak. Okay? But in general like if I what I wanted to do was like I had a pulse shape like this if I pass it through a match filter match filter 
impulse response h of t should be like a box if i pass a box through a box what is the convolution of these two the output is something like this a triangle okay and where is the best place to sample the triangle the best place is at this place at the peak because i want to take one sample and make my decision now when it was going through the system in addition like this was like the channel whatever it is channel whatever channel it is this channel adds noise to this and when i sample i take a sample of the signal plus sample of noise okay so this comes my uh, transmitted pulse I mean this is the filter and then at the transmitter whatever it is and then in here I have channel at the receiver I have the same filter then this is like uh, the same filter so it's convolution of the same thing so it comes something like this for example and then I sample it at peak, peak value in here. Okay, and the sample that I get in here is really, I mean the amplitude is a square root of energy of the signal plus a noise component. This is what I get at the output. What is each energy of the symbol? What is symbol is this thing, like S of T. So ES is equal to integral of uh, s of t magnitude square dt okay, this is the story of match filter and actually it can be shown that in order to like optimally I mean maximize the signal to noise ratio means that at the output in here I can sample at different times to maximize, I can sample at t equals to t, where this t is duration of the pulse. At that time, if I sample, I will have a square root of es plus e, and my signal to noise ratio at the output, which is es, my magnitude square over like epsilon square this is my signal to noise ratio this is variance of the noise and this is energy of the signal this is my signal to noise ratio that's why I will represent it by something like gamma s I call it gamma sub s okay this gamma sub s is equal to actually es over n0 n0 is variance of this noise filtered noise es is energy in the signal and this one is signal to noise signal to noise ratio per symbol if you want to call it per transmitted symbol so uh, now the key is that uh, uh, in summary uh, when I send a pulse the optimum receiver for the pulse is a match filter which is sampling the pulse at T equals to capital T duration of the pulse and if I do that the signal to noise ratio at the output sample the sample signal to noise ratio is es over n0 n0 is variance of the noise es is energy per symbol so really truly when i want to play with this i don't need to remember this diagrams and this much of detail anymore uh, i can only stay with energy per symbol and variance of the noise I call variance of the noise N0 and this ES and then I look at different possibilities and try to change them now for those of you I mean that I, I, not those of all of you I assume that you have had other courses and you have seen that uh, what we want to do is that we want to see that now I receive a symbol like this one I receive a symbol and this symbol has some value plus some noise then I want to decide to say that what was this symbol okay and this symbol like if I have binary communication which is the simplest thing is either 0 or 1 so I send one symbol for 1 one symbol for 0 and then you want to say that whether it was 0 or it was 1 as a result uh, all the time you make correct decision but sometimes 
this noise comes to the picture and you make error make error means that it was zero you say it was one it was one you can it says that's it and then in other courses most probably you have seen that you can calculate the probability of error for that and when you calculate the probability of error of that since this noise is gaussian okay always it is like tail of this gaussian ends up to be f complement function of something okay or it will end up to be like an exponential function of something. Always probability of errors, not always, I mean, most common probability of error terms that we calculate are either in form of erf or in form of exponential. So if you don't believe me, go and check your digital communication courses that you have taken before, either undergraduate or graduate. Probability of errors are always in the form of either f or exponential, or like a mixture of that. Okay? But what is the meaning of that probability of error? That's the probability of I have sent a symbol, I make an error. I say this is another symbol. And usually these are very, very small numbers, like 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5. So when we represent them, we represent them in logarithmic form. This is just a summary of the things that you have seen before. So basically, if I want to summarize, for the match filter, in the match filter, basically, I send a pause, and at the receiver, I pass it through the match filter, I sample the output, and then variance of the noise is N0, I assume, energy in the symbol is ES, and output of the match filter has this signal-to-noise ratio. ES over N0. Okay? This is something that I'm just trying to remind you from other courses. Now, the second thing that I told you was that probability of errors are either in the form of exponential versus gamma sub B. This gamma sub B is of the same nature of this gamma. This is gamma per symbol. This is gamma per bit. If I have binary communication, signal to noise ratio per bit and signal to noise ratio per symbol are the same. If I have like more than binary, they may be changed, but it's not difficult to find a relationship between them. But the bottom line of what I'm telling you is that from if you want to look at what you have seen in the past, you had this signal to noise ratio calculations which are signal to noise ratio at the output of a match filter and then you had some probability of errors either probability of bit error or symbol error it's a function of exponential of signal to noise ratio uh, multiplied with a number like beta and there is another number in front of there like like alf and this alf and beta changes modulation technique changes Okay, or signal to or the probability of error is of this form, f complement of a square root of gamma sub b, and then again for different parameters like beta and alpha. Usually, this is what you have seen in the past, and I'm just reminding you. What is this f complement function? F complement function is defined by this, which is like if you have the Gaussian, it's tail of this Gaussian area between this x up to infinity of a Gaussian. Okay. Then uh, other forms that people give you is this equation. If I have multiple symbols and I put the symbols in like two dimensional like this, if I have two symbols and the distance between these two symbols is like d from what you have seen again in the past, probability of error is given by this. 0.5 f complement of d over 2 a square root of n0. d is the distance between the two symbols. Okay, these are things that we have seen in the past. Now, but before I continue and build up on top of that, to come up to something useful, which is applicable for the system engineers, 
Let me just tell you what is the difference between exponential, uh, sorry, exponential and earth. Exponential and earth, both of them are exponential actually. In a sense, if I get like earth complement of, this is earth complement of S square root of gamma sub B, this is E to the minus gamma sub B. Both of them multiplied with one half. If I compare them, they are very similar. As I increase, as they go down further, they get even closer. So in a sense, this gamma is the so-called asymptotic bound for earth complement. So actually, I can interchange these two together. I mean, I can change earth with exponential. Exponential, in a sense, is a bound. This is actually greater than. Okay, always exponential. If I get like this signal to noise ratio of 10, I have error rate of like so much, almost like so much between 10 to the minus 5 and 6 for earth complement and for the exponential I have like something close to 10 to the minus 5 okay which is a little bit higher than this and as I increase the signal to noise ratio which is in this side these are exponential these go down and they get closer to one another so both of these they have the form of they call it waterfall they look like waterfall And as the signal to noise ratio increases more, you go further down in the waterfall. And you go deep down, exponential and earth complement are actually the same. So I can exchange them really. Sometimes people exchange them. And exponential is like an upper bound for earth complement. This is just to remind you that. So it's not as complex as it looks. I open uh, like digital communication books, so many equations, so many things, etc. Sometimes I get lost. But if I look in a system engineer, I want to make life very easy and lazy because otherwise I cannot learn many, many things. System engineers should know many, many things and they have to have intuition. So I just remember that there's not much of difference between earth and exponential. Okay? And then after all, all of them have two parameters, alpha and beta. Huh? And the rest the structure is the same. I have earth complement of a square root of a number, whatever number, times signal to noise ratio. And then it is multiplied with something like alpha. Okay? And it can be exchanged to exponential. Now, there is another interesting thing in here that I want to remind you before I go anywhere. These are just intuitive understanding. Now, so I, I say that all of these signal to noise ratio stuff that we have calculated in digital communication courses, graduate, undergraduate, ups and down, in additive noise, they look like this. Either this one or either this one or this one. And both of them are exponential in a sense. Okay, And when I sketch them, I put gamma sub B in dB and probability of error in like logarithmic form. 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 3, 4, logarithmic form. This is also a logarithmic form huh? because it's dB, signal to noise ratio in dB. This is what I do. Now, and what I'm practically interested in is that if you give me a particular modulation technique, for a given signal to noise ratio, like 8 dB signal to noise ratio, for example, what is the associated error rate of one modulation technique compared to another modulation technique? This is what we are doing always. Purpose of performance evaluation of the modem is this thing. Why this is so important? Because you, this signal to noise ratio is a measure of transmitted power. If I come up and I tell you I have one modulation technique which gives you probability of error of 10 to the minus 5 
with 8 dB and the other guy gives you with 11 dB, there is 3 dB difference between them. Means that the life of the battery for one of them is twice the other one. That's the minimum. Huh? Because I'm draining twice as much. 3 dB is equivalent to two times in power. So often customer comes with a probability of error requirement. If you have a voice application, people usually have between 10 to the minus 2 and minus 3 for probability of error. And they want to know that in different modulations, how much signal to noise ratio is required. For data application, people are interested in better than 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so I have different signal to noise ratio for that, requirement for that. And that's how we play, with, play the game of modulation techniques to compare them with one another. Okay. Now, uh, let me just go one step further now. But before I go there, I told you one thing. I want to make life easier. Okay. To make life easier, I told you that if you have like multiple symbol transmitted, one of them is in here, one of them is in here, distance is something like D, this is probability of error. That's the same as this earth complement function that I have in here. Could be equivalent to this as well. So in a sense, probability of error that I calculate through here, through an equation like this, is a function of distance between the received symbols. Because background noise is always constant. And if I change the distance between the, the symbols, actually I'm changing the energy. Okay? Energy of the symbols. And probability of error will be a function of that. Now, to represent the symbols, often we use something they call a signal constellation. Signal constellation is energy of different symbols. Because if I have energy of different symbols, then I can calculate the distance between the symbols. One more interesting thing is that this is an exponential function. Okay. If I have like three exponentials, I add them. See, I have, let's say, exponential, I call it like 0.5 earth complement of something like 10 over 2 square root of n0 and then the other one is plus 0.5 earth complement of let's say 3 over 2 over a square root of n0 this is associated to d equal to 3 this is associated to d equal to 10 okay these are exponential function if d is equal to 10 this numbers this number become much smaller than this number. So what will happen is that when I want to calculate the probability of errors to make my life easier, I stick to the distances, I always pick up a smallest distance. And I calculate my probability of symbol error based on the smallest distance. Because these are exponential functions. If, if there is a two difference between them, is like order of magnitude change in the probability of error. So in a sense, I can say my probability of error also can be done by earth complement of d mean, minimum distance, between symbols over 2 square root of n0. These are equations which are very, very useful for calculation of error rate. See, I have to make my life easy because I have too many choices to compare. If I want to still remember, I don't want to remember about match filter anymore. Because that's another layer of detail. I'm bringing my life now to a simpler thing. I have a sing signal constellation. I represent the modulation technique with a signal constellation. And that's the way that they represent it in every standard. Okay? Now, in the signal constellation, if I want to calculate probability of error, one good approximation is to rely on D mean. 
and use this equation that I have for dimming. Okay? So now my life is easier. I can play with signal constellations. And I want to see how to associate signal constellation to different modulation techniques. And then I can compare them. And the only thing that I'm interested is what the minimum distance. Minimum distance when they have the same average symbol strength. This is the general story. Let's now go to two examples and see what we want to do. We first start with binary modulation technique and some examples associated to that. Well, the simplest binary modulation technique is the so-called on-off shifting. On-off shifting is, as the name says, you have an oscillator whenever you have digital number one oscillator runs, one oscillator runs, and whenever you have zero, oscillator stops. So I have or I don't have. So now I have two symbols. One symbol is a cosine, the other symbol is what? Is zero. So if I have signal constellation, I have something like this. At zero, I have this thing, and at, let's say, for one, I have this thing. So basically, my signal constellation, if I want to show it, I have a two-dimensional, a 1D, 1D signal constellation. I have two energies, energy zero associated to symbol, for example, zero, and then I have another symbol with energy of ES, if I want to represent it with ES, or S square root of ES, and that one is associated to symbol one. So in my signal constellation, I have two points. One of them is representing zero with the energy zero. The other one represents symbol, uh, digit one with the energy S square root of ES, for example. How could I find that if my waveform was something like piece of T, this ES in here is integral of PT square DT. Huh? That's the energy in that symbol that I'm sending. In my case, it was like a cosine, so I put a cosine in there. Okay? And the integral goes between 0 and T, if it's a cosine. So here I am. I have one part of this thing. I made my life very easy. Rather than thinking about offset QP, uh, 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 on off phase shifting, I only think about like the signal constellation. Okay? And then I can do other things. Now, there is another point in here. What is the probability of error for this thing? Probability of error for this thing is if I come back to the computer, is given by this equation. Is 0.5 earth complement of EB over 2 times N0, over N0, okay? Which is the same as gamma B over 2, again, earth complement. If I want to just relate it to the old stuff that I had, in here, energy... The distance between these two guys is D, okay? And then average energy per bit, I mean energy per bit that I send on the average, either I send zero, what, what was the energy in zero? That was only zero. Or I send a pulse like ES, or pulse S, which energy was ES, divided by 2. Okay, so energy per bit is energy per symbol over 2. This ES happens to be energy of that symbol that I'm sending, this guy that I'm sending. Okay, now, how about the distance? D equals to what? D is actually S square root of 
es which is equal to s square root of 2 eb okay so if I put these things to the equations that I had like for minimum distance I had 0.5 earth complement of if you remember that was d over 2 square root of n0 so this is equal to 0.5 earth complement of rather than d I put s square root of 2 eb over 2 square root of n0 this would be equal to 1 half this is the 0.5 earth complement of square root of eb over 2n0 this 2 comes under here is 4 okay which is exactly what I have in here on the computer did you follow how I calculated so based on the distance and energy of the symbol I can calculate the error rate and the without going and thinking about match filter how people send this stuff I mean those are distracting me a little bit but now and then I take this EB over N0 energy per bit over N0 I call it gamma of B which is signal to noise ratio per bit if you want to call it and now I have a very nice fine equation in terms of earth and if I want to compute it with the like gamma function, this is related to like exponential, real exponential. This is the bound for that. Okay, this is the bound. Okay, so I did one example for you. Now, before I do anything and I go further, let me just come back to the same figure and go in the top part of it. Just uh, if you look at the top part, Output of this match filter for this particular case is something like z sub t, which is my sample signal, equal, equal to a sub i, which is a number which could be either 0 or 1, times a square root of es plus this epsilon, which is my noise. Okay? So basically, to think of, like mathematically, Forgetting about all the diagram, everything which existed, if I want to think about this, my decisions are a square root of es times ai plus epsilon. These are like, I mean, the sample signal. Sorry, not the decision. My sample signals are like that. My probability of error is one half f complement a square root of gamma b over two. Okay, and. The way that I operate is that when the data is coming in, if data is 1, I will send a symbol. If data is 0, I will send nothing. Okay. At the receiver, when I receive this thing, I don't receive exactly this number. I receive these numbers plus that ADA, plus some noise. So it's something like here. Huh? Or I receive something like here. But I don't know what it is. I have to make a decision. The number that I received, what would be my decision? Natural decision in here. I draw a line in here between 0 and 1 at d over 2. And if the number that I received is in this side, I declare it was a 0. If it receives in this side, I declare it was a 1. This line, I refer to that as decision line. Decision line. So, if somebody gave me like on of king, I define the on of king with a signal constellation, with a decision line, and the distance, minimum distance between transmitter and receiver. Okay? If I want, if I call this, this is the minimum distance from the decision line. Okay? If I want to write, if I call this distance from decision line by this delta, a small delta, then I can take the equation that I had earlier, which was this equation, and this is part of your homework actually, and write it down as 0.5 earth complement of, rather than d half, I put now delta. Delta by itself equals to d half 
means that d equals to 2 times delta. Okay? So I will end up with like delta over a square root of n0 if I have not made any error. Now, either in here or in homework I have made an error, but I will fix it later on. But anyways, I can define my signal constellation based on the distance of the point from the decision line as well. Do you follow me? Now, what is the advantage of defining the thing based on distance, minimum distance from decision line? That one is good in practical implementation when the points are not really truly uh, uniformly distributed. And we see some of those examples later on. But all I want to remember here is that is that I had this minimum distance between the two points like D, distance from decision line delta, and delta equals to D over 2. And then in terms of D, my probability of error is 0.5 earth complement of D over 2 square root of N0. In terms of delta, it would be like 0.5 Earth complement of delta over a square root of n0. Hmm? So I have a very simple equation for calculation of error rate. And then another thing that I remember is that if I have many, many points with many, many dis dis decision lines, the one which has closest distance to decision line will dominate the error rate. The others are negligible. Okay, based on that now I can do the calculations very simply for error rates. Okay. So let me go for the next one. The next system that I want to go in for the time being is binary PSK. Let me just go binary PSK. In binary PSK what I do is if you remember I have zeros and ones again. This time I have an oscillator. Whenever it is one, I send the signal like a cosine. Whenever it's zero, I inverse it. I inverse the polarity. So I have two symbols which are 180 degrees apart. So my information is encod encoded in phase. So I call it binary phase shift, phase shift king. So BPSK. Now, what I want to represent in here is now uh, the, what will happen to the parts. I, will have, I have only one symbol, and this symbol is either in uh, forward direction or in backward direction, if you want, with 180 degrees phase shift, up or down. Okay? So my receive signal at the output of the, uh, at the output of uh, my sample receive signal at the output of the match filter is something like this is ES a square root of ES plus AI this time AI is either plus 1 or minus 1 rather than the AI that I had earlier which was what which was 0 and 1 okay plus the noise if I want to do a signal constellation for that, the signal constellation for that would be something like this. These are ES1s, ES1. And ES1 by itself is integral of this S of t that I had, a square dt. Okay? So here I am. So if I want to calculate the probability of error for this one, I can calculate the probability of error for this, like this. I have, so another example. I have two points in the constellation. If I have zero, I send this point. If I have one, I send this point. This is a square root of ES, if you want to call it, or ES1. This is a square root of ES1 with the minus sign. Okay? 
I have two points in the constellation. Now, what is energy per bit? Energy per bit is average energy. Energy in here is how much? Is ES1, a square of this thing. Energy in here is another ES1. Divided by 2, EB equals to ES. Last time, EB was equal to ES over 2. This is binary PSK now. Okay? Now, what is the distance between the two? The distance is equal to 2 square root of ES1. Okay? What is delta in here? Delta equals to a square root of ES1. Okay? So, if I want to calculate now probability of error for this thing, probability, this is binary, probability of similar error is the same as probability of bit error, is 0.5 earth complement of, I had D over 2, so it's 2 a square root of ES1 over 2 a square root of N0, which is equal to 1 half earth complement of a square root of ES, which is the same as EB, EB over N0. And EB over N0 was my gamma, so it is 1 half earth complement of a square root of gamma sub. So this is what I have calculated in here. Okay. Now you can go and do that for FSK. What is FSK? Binary FSK is, so I gave you two examples, simple examples, but the purpose, I mean, you have seen these derivations before, but the way that I'm doing, I'm doing life easy. I do my derivations based on the distance between the points. Okay. Now, and then we can come for, like, uh, for FSK. If I come for FSK, FSK basically binary FSK. I have one, I send a signal with one frequency. If I have zero, I send another signal with a different frequency, with this frequency. But I have to select these two frequencies so that they are orthogonal. Means that integral of the first symbol times second symbol equals to zero. I mean, if I integrate them over one over t, this ends up to be zero. This, they call it orthogonal, huh? Orthogonal in the domain of t. Now, if you have two frequencies, in order for those two frequencies to be orthogonal, one of them should be multiple of the other one. Okay, so I have two frequencies, f1 and f2. There is a difference between them that I call it delta f. If delta f, which is the difference between the two, is a multiple of like f1, like a number m times f1, always they are orthogonal. Okay? So, if I want to pick up the minimum is that I pick the delta f like the same as uh, the two symbols like m equal to 1, okay? Uh, if delta f uh, is, uh, sorry, m multiple of bit rate, bandwidth, or let me say r, rb, the data rate, means that if you have, I have a binary modulation technique, and I have a data rate in there, because I'm sending it at t, so I have a data rate of r, which is 1 over t. Okay? This data rate of, if the delta f is a multiple of r sub b, these signals become orthogonal. So that's the key in frequency modulation. Okay? So if my data rate is 1 megabit per second, the difference between f1 and f2 is 1 megahertz, 
then those two symbols are orthogonal. Okay? And if the distance is 2 megahertz, also they are of orthogonal. But I'm not going to do that. I, will, I don't want to spend a lot of bandwidth. So I always go with what? M equal to 1. Okay? When M equals to 1, we refer to that as FSK. So for FSK, often in practice, delta F equals to R, the data rate. This is called FSK. If you have FSK, you can demodulate the signal coherent and non-coherent. Means that with the reference or without the reference at the receiver. Okay? But if you have coherent detector, actually you can create two orthogonal signal even when delta F equals to R over 2. Okay, if delta F equals to R over 2, I must have coherent detector, and people refer to that as minimum shift king, which is the minimum distance between the two frequencies. But for FSK, if otherwise, I have FSK that the distance between the two is the same as data rate. Okay. So in the literature, whenever people are talking about FSK, the distance is what? R. And when they are talking about minimum shift keying, the distance between two frequencies is R over 2. Okay? Of course, minimum shift keying is what? More bandwidth efficient because the two cosines are closer to one another. Okay? But implementation is more challenging. Okay? How about signal constellation? I think if you think about FSK, really you have two signals which are orthogonal. When you have two signals which are orthogonal, they are in the domain of 2D rather than 1D, if you want to call it. So if you want to associate a signal constellation for that, that would be something like this signal constellation. They are orthogonal in two different things. And this is the distance. And then you can calculate the error rate with based on half of the distance between them. So, what I did so far, I talked about three basic modulation techniques. On-off keying, binary FSK, binary PSK, and I calculated the error rates. I also talked about coherent detection and non-coherent detection. I talked about it, I didn't talk about the detail of that. Just generally, I told you that you can do coherent detection when you have the reference of the phase at the receiver. means that receiver and transmitter are phase synchronized. Non-coherent, you don't need that reference, extra circuitry. So non-coherent is a little bit more easy to be implemented. Coherent is more difficult to be implemented because I need a phase lock loop at the receiver. But based on that, I did some examples. But if you look at the courses that you had earlier, basic modulation techniques, if you have FSK or on-off keying, coherent detection, probability of error is given to, with something like that. If you have binary PSK, coherent detection, probability of error is something like that. So actually, if I want to compare these two, for the same signal to noise ratio, for the same error rate, for the same error rate, in here, I can have the same error rate with half power of what I have in here. So binary PSK is like 3 dB better than FSK or on-off king. Okay? Because there's a ratio of 2 in there, between them. That 3 dB means that, I mean, you need half power. I mean, life of battery goes twice. Okay? But this is coherent detection. Now, there is another way to implement binary PSK, which is non-coherent binary PSK. Probability of error is given like this. 
This is the difference between exponential and earth complement. And we saw the difference between ex exponential and earth complement. It's like 1 or 2 dB in data rates around, around like 10 to the minus 2, 3. If you want, I can go there and show it to you. See, if I come in here, 10 to the minus 5, the difference between these two is less than a dB. If I come to like low error rates, 10 to the minus 2, the difference is Anyways, for 10 to the minus 2, the difference is something around 2 dB between the two. Okay? So just, just to know the difference between coherent and non-coherent. BPSK. Okay. Then the last thing that I have in here is non-coherent FSK. Non-coherent FSK is 3 dB worse than non-coherent DPSK. So if you want to summarize these things, really the difference between coherence and non-coherence is the difference between Rf and gamma function, which at 10 to the minus 5 is less than 1 dB. At 10 to the minus 2, it is around like 3 dB. 2 dB, sorry. Difference between binary PSK and FSK or on-off shift king is like 3 dB. With that, we can continue our like, discussion. But before we start, our next step would be like multi-level modulation techniques. But before I go to multi-level modulation techniques, let me look at the curves. These are the curves for binary PSK, differential binary PSK, non-coherent FSK, and coherent FSK. Okay? Now, for coherent FSK and non-coherent FSK, and for DPSK and binary PSK, the difference is between the, 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 the difference between gamma and R functions. The other is like 3 dB. Just to see that, I can show you in these curves. Let's take the 10 to the minus 5. For 10 to the minus 5, this is coherent BPSK. This is coherent FSK. The difference is about how much? 3 dB. That comes from that gamma B over 2 thing that we did earlier. Okay? That two times in there. Then, if you take the same thing, the difference between non coherent FSK and non coherent BPSK, again the difference is the same 3 dB, coming from the same gamma over 2. Okay? Now, what is the difference between coherent and non coherent? That's the difference between Rf and gamma, which are very close and they are asymptotic and they are sensitive to what? to the error rate if I go to the error rate of 10 to the minus 5 the difference is around 1 dB if I go to the 10 to the minus 2 that's more than that it is like something like 2 dB ok so basically what I did up to here in the first part of the narrowband modems I talked about basic modulation techniques I talked about on-off shift king which is something that I'm not that keen on nobody uses that because when you have multiple zeros you cannot detect them you don't know that they have turned off the transmitter or the system is off or I mean you are receiving zeros and you make too many errors in zeros then I mean in the banking environment that's very bad so you don't want to like when you're sending the wealth of like the Bill Gate you don't want people to think that transmitter was something faulty sending like nine zeros <laughs> okay so uh, the ones that are popular 
are PSK and FSK. And as actually, I told you the ones which are applied are what? Are GMSK, which is a frequency shifting alternative. And then pi over 4 QPSK, which is a phase shifting alternative. And that's my ultimate goal in this lecture, to get to that. But in order to get to that, first I said, I'm, I want to compare frequency shifting with phase shifting. The simplest version is what? Binary FSK, binary PSK. And I compared them. And throughout this comparison that I was making, really I reviewed a lot of material that you have had before. But I put it in a structure which is more convenient. I related them into, to the distance in the signal constellation. And I also reminded you about coherent versus non-coherent detection and the 1 to 2 dB difference that they have in the performance and then FSK, basic FSK versus PSK which they have like 3 dB difference that's what we had so far and uh, with that we can close this first part of the lecture and start our second part which now we go to multi-symbol communication not binary communication and see that what happens for those type of thing and then the third part would be the applied thing which is GMSK and pi over 4 QPSK